He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, an adder, the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. God, thank you for the reading of the word. Tom Mayuan, as you may not know, uh, it is a place of dwelling uh, many times as Christians we don't we, we're not in the place where we need to be and once we find out the place where we need to be we start moving and operating uh, from a different area your anointing uh, is, is, is very unique and maybe you don't know that or not but your anointing is very unique and it's very special it is an anointing that God has given you as a, as a weapon, not the weapons that he had formed for us, but the weapons against the enemy. See, Satan is anti. He's against anything that is of Christ, anything that, that, that has anything to do with the word of God and your spiritual growth. The words say the soul went to sow what? A seed. The seed is the word. That's what he don't want to grow. He don't want it to flourish. He do not want it to, to produce what God intended for it to produce. And if you look at St. John chapter 15, verse 8, your fruit is supposed to remain because of your anointing. Your anointing uh, can only be driven away by neglect. The Bible said, be careful, let the enemy come and remove your candlestick. The candlestick or the candle represents life. So if you come and remove your life or your anointing, you have absolutely nothing to work with. So as we look at this tonight, David wanted to show us some, some things. There are five things I really want to touch on tonight, but I, I doubt if we get a chance to. But nevertheless, we're going to start it just in case. If you look at Psalm 91, and we're going to start at verse number one, we'll read that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, uh, some points as we go. Uh, it's very important that you know what season it is. We are in warfare season. Now you may not know that. You may not even heard that. You know, maybe 
Maybe your life right now is somewhat comfortable, but trust me, it won't be that way long. Because the Bible says that in the latter days, the enemy is going to get greater, or sin is going to get greater than it's ever gotten. Look around now, look what's happening now. Look, look, look how sin is on the rampant and seem like no justice is being done. Mm. It, it seems like people are getting killed and nobody else going to jail. Right. You know, they just l lying dead in the streets don't matter. You know, uh, I, I happened to watch a video last night uh, on cops and it was just amazing what I saw. You know, and it's not just in uh, Las Vegas, it's not just in Los Angeles, it's in corporate America. It, it seems like the ones that have the authority to do right are doing wrong. You know, uh, because the Bible said time will come when they will believe a strong delusion. A delusion is something that it appears to be real, but it's not. It's just a delusion. You know, it's sort of like when you're in a desert and you're, you're so thirsty, you, you, you're you paranoid, you're out of your head. So anything you see that's shining is going to look like water. But the closer you get to it, the more sand appears. So that's what's going on now. Sin is getting so great that the, the law enforcement, the ones that are hired and paid by you and I, our taxes, are not doing their job. And, and then when they do their job, they're doing it and mishandling the way they do it. If there's a, there's a right and wrong way to do everything, you know, and as, as we as Christians, if we don't start standing up now and literally stand up, and then after we have stood up, then we have to do what the Bible says. If my people which are called by my name. See, we got, we got power that, that we're not even using. You know, we have been given uh, authority over the enemy. If, if, if Satan is doing anything in, in your house or, or in your surrounding and you ain't doing nothing about it, you ain't using your power. Because you have the power to run him off. And not only that, it only takes a one word. That word is resistance. Mm. Resist the devil and he'll flee. That word resist is, is an old Greek word which means ignore. To ignore. Ignore him. Don't Like he ain't even there. Mm. And once, once he realizes that you're not thinking about him, he move on to somebody else that he can use because he automatically know he cannot use you now. He can't use you because number one, you realize what he's doing. And after you realize what he's doing, you're standing up for that which is right. And Christ said that in the last days, you, you, you're going to see trouble like never before. We, we are living in troubled times. I expect all this stuff to go on. I expect it to go on. Why? Because the Bible says if the Bible did not say it, then I would have some, some issues with it. But I don't have any issues with it. I have issues with the fact that the Christians are not standing up being Christians. They're not fighting the warfare with Satan. You know, you somebody got to be on the wall. Somebody got to warn. Somebody got to blow the trumpet. Who will it be? You know, because we, we now got such a, such a hectic schedule. The Bible says that the reason that the schedule is so hectic is that Satan is trying to wear us out. He'll work you to death. You'd be so tired, you'd be so drug out, you drag into church and you drag into praise, you drag into read because you ain't got no strength. He don't wore you out. You done fought him all day long. It don't seem like you have not uh, uh, you know, availed, but you have, trust me. He's not gonna let him take you over. Mm. Don't ever worry about that. He said he won't even let your feet slip. Amen. You know, so so when you're going through, don't don't worry about what he's doing. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. They're going to soon be cut down. Right now, he's on, his time is, 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 is ticking very fast. And he knows it. So that's why he's doing what he's doing in the churches. Churches of cor cross cor corporate America uh, in, in a whole bunch of, bunch of issues in trouble. But then we as Christians, we can't let that stop us. We got, we got to get, a, we got to get that get up and go spirit. Like I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm, I'm gonna do it because you say do it, and we'll find out. So watch this tonight as we teach you this particular lesson tonight from Psalm 91. As I said, this is a a a, a place of dwelling. Uh, when when we read it, you'll see, you know, uh, what God is talking about. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, now, now notice what he said. Now, th there, there's a word there that we use quite frequently in corporate America, which is dwelling or, you know, dwelling. 
that is a place where you spend the majority of your time. And what he's really saying, he that dwelleth in the place of God, which is in God's presence, or one say the church, one, one, one theologian say, if we hide ourselves within the sanctuary, then Satan can't find us. But what you have to understand is that the, the church is where Satan comes. He ain't going to the bar. He got them. You know, he, he ain't going to these clubs and stuff around. He got the people already. He's coming to church to find out who is not paying attention. Who do not know how to use the anointing. Who do not know how to come to the altar and, and, and fall on their knees and ask God for forgiveness and get up and dust yourself off and get back in the saddle. Because he'll make you think because what you have done, you can't get forgiven of. Mm. And that's the biggest lie that ever told. Why do you think Jesus died? He died that you may have a right to the tree of life. Amen. And not only that, but that your sins may be remitted. That, that God will forgive you of your sins. So when, when he come in and, and, and try to uh, cause us not to stand, we ought to stand the more. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Why is it secret? Now we go back to the heart. The heart is, is the secret place. If you've got God here and have put him there, then David say, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. If you read and study enough of the word of God, you have enough ammo to whip in a demon to come your way. And not only that, but you'll walk in total victory. And when I say total victory, I'm not saying you ain't going to have no issues. I'm not saying you ain't going to fall, but total victory means total dominion. And you got dominion over that. You know, you can go to God, you can cry out to God, He'll forgive you whatever it is. You know, and, and one thing that we have to realize is that the secret place, a lot of times, He referred to it in the scripture, said, Go into your secret closet. That is a place that you mostly have designated to meet God. May it be uh, somewhere in your house, uh, in your car, wherever. But the, the thing that He's talking about here is that in your heart. Put God here. If, you, if God is here, then the treasures that are going to be found here are going to be treasures from heaven. Because where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. And if you want to be with Jesus, then you got all that pertains to him is going to be here. So you hide it in here. That's one place that you got to realize that Satan can't get to. That's your heart. That's, the, that's what issues life, your heart. Your heart pump blood throughout your entire body. You can lose a lot of other uh, vital parts on your body, but you cannot lose your heart and remain living. You had those that got even have gotten heart transplants that don't live long because the heart they have don't belong to them. And sometimes the the, the the alter the altercation of the medication that they give you don't work. You see. And you live for a little while and then you die. But he's talking about spiritually here. Don't die spiritually. Don't allow what's coming up on the earth to kill you. Mm. Because he said that the things that are coming on the earth, people's hearts are beginning to fail them. Now, now, now you can look at that in two, two aspects. One of them is natural, but the other one is truly spiritual. People cannot take what's coming up on the earth. You know what they're doing? They're leaving the churches. They're leaving God. And the very source that they need to sustain them, they're walking away from it. And as though it ain't no more good, like it has no more power. The power that God has, you can, you can never lose it. You can deny it, you can resist it, but as long as you're on the earth, the power is still available to you. You just got to get into a position to receive it. Everybody don't, don't, don't receive it uh, just as by bowing when they need it. Because that, that's a form. That's fashion. People, sometimes people come around this altar because everybody's stuck. They, they, some of them don't come looking for nothing. Because they're standing there, they're not praying. They're not surrendering by lifting their hands up. They're not saying anything to God. They're not speaking the heavenly language. They just hear because somebody else came. But that ain't the reason to come. You ought to have a reason to come to this altar. One of the reasons is God enabled you to make it here and you're here and you're alive. You ought to thank God for being alive. Mm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Nobody can get above God. 
they, 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 there is no other God, so don't 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 be fooled by the hype. You know, it ain't but one God, and Satan tremble in fear that one God. Now he may make you think he's big and bad and Mr. Big Stuff, but let me tell you something: he's scared of God. For real. And he's not only scared of God, but he's afraid of the saints and what the saints can do. Because if we pull our powers together and unite ourselves as one, oh man, you talking about somebody on the run? He will run past where he lives. Really? <laughs> because number one, we we all together. And when you come together as a as a force, then you're a force that, that can't be reckoned with. And, and that's why I say to no, don't jump on you like he really wants to, because he can't. God only allowed him to go so far. You know the story of Job, right? He wouldn't have never attacked Job if he wouldn't have believed in his heart. The only reason that Job served God is because of material things. Right. He believed that. And God said, well, I might as well go. You're the father of lies, so I'm going to go ahead and let you prove it to yourself. <laughs> Take the stuff, but don't touch his soul. When he took everything Job had, Job did the ultimate thing that God wanted him to do. Job said, naked I came into the world, naked I leave. But blessed be the name of the Lord. So he realized that God had very little to do with all that was going on. And he realized that the same God could give him what he had. And give it in more, more abundant. Because you know why? He said, I give you life and that more abundantly. That's more than what you have now. When you lose anything, for God's sake, he give it back to you in double fold. If the enemy take anything from you that you deem to be God, he'll give it back to you in double fold. See, that, that's, that's why we shouldn't have no issues with serving God. We shouldn't fear nobody. The psalm would say, I have no fear. I fear nobody. The Lord is the strength of my life. And I, I have no. Then he asked the person, who shall I fear thee? If God is the strength of my life and my life, who am I be afraid of? Because the only thing they can do if he allows them to is kill me. But they can't do nothing else with the soul. See, the soul belongs to God. And he better not touch that. And if it's within God's will, he'll raise you back up. You know the stories in the Bible, all the people God raised back up. Come on, please. I don't doubt God in no area. He's he that dwelleth. You have to make your dwelling place in the secret places of God, which is the sanctuary, your heart. Let your heart be open to what goes on in the sanctuary. Do you know, I was, I was studying in, in Kings and how they, how when they go to worship, how, how, how those people got themselves prepared for worship. That's the one thing we don't do. We don't prepare for worship. We just come here and flop down in the chair and they say open the Bible up, you open the Bible up but you don't you don't see for no revelation you don't see for no move of God you don't ask God to do nothing you just sit there in the church out, you glad to go home but then when you really calm down, ask yourself what did you get? what did you receive out of what all that went on? because in every one of us, our candles should be a little brighter after we leave here our light should be brighter after we leave here because we just left the presence of God. And God illuminates everywhere he goes. So he says, dwelling in the secret place. In the secret place, there, there is a place there called there. Now, when, when, when you get there, you're going to know you're there. Now, that's, that has to do with your worship. You can't worship God. And, 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 and I literally mean this. You cannot worship God in two minutes. If, if you can worship God in two minutes, he ain't a big God at all. If God fills the universe, it takes constant praise to stay in the presence of God. When you, when, you, when you pray for two minutes, it's like you ain't did nothing. Because you hadn't labored with that praise. Everything we do, we have to labor. Do you know labor is involved in it? Labor is involved in everything we do. That's why he said, come into the vineyard and work. Whatsoever right, I don't will pay you. You have to labor. You, you have to get serious with it. Now, I'm not saying by no means it takes more than two minutes. I'm saying that it is, it is, it's not possible for you to do it in two minutes. 
Because if, if you can get satisfied with everything you asking God for in two minutes, why you can get why, why you can come over here? He said, if you got hope and hope making out of shame, and if you don't believe that hope, then go on and get it then. Go get what you want. Because <laughs> hope making out of shame. When you hope and believe in what you hoping for, it's sort of like a prayer. When you ask God, believe that you have what already received it, and it shall be yours. So he said, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And then he says, well, look, 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 look at the, the latter part of that verse. What, what does it say? To be holy. Under the shadow, of the Almighty. shadow. Now, the shadow is just a reflection of you. There's a shadow in my hand on this on this. Here. That's a shadow. So it says if you stay in the presence of God, you're constantly covered by God's shadow. You can't go nowhere that God's shadow is not there. Because God is everywhere. Shadow is just a reflection of what is real. That's all it is. God is real. So when you, when, when, when you are uh, abiding in, in his secret place and in the shadow of the Almighty, right now, it just just it just told you that Satan's power is limited because you you, you walk in the shadows of God to get to you he got to get to God do you really think he want to wrestle with God again I mean he don't got embarrassed once he don't, he don't want that no more you know he, all he gonna do now he gonna do it to us because we love God he said I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna get what's close like your children for instance he know he can get some of us by just getting to them kids. He know it. He know he can get to us by jobs and, and, and other things, money and everything. He know how he can get to you by stuff. It all depends on how you attach to stuff. Look at the young man, the rich young man. He wanted to go to heaven. He didn't want to get rid of stuff. What must I do to be saved? God told him. So you got to sell all you have and give to God knew that was his problem. That's not everybody's problem. God don't tell everybody to give away everything you got. If that's not your issue, you'll never hear from God. God deal with, with issues that's causing you not to submit to him. That boy, boy ain't nowhere in the world he's going to give it up. Because the Bible said he had much. He had inherited an inheritance from his family. He wasn't finna give that to, give it to the poor. And then I'm gonna be poor. He thought. But God told him, give that to the poor and you'll have riches in heaven. See, people want their pie now, not in the sky. See, they, they, they don't they don't want they don't want to meet God in the sky and get all they want it now. So they'll sell God up the river for little or nothing. Right now, God has no value to some people. Because of the way they walk, the way they believe. So many things have happened to them that they believe, they actually starting to believe that there is no God. It's sad to say, but it is. I deal with people on a regular basis. You should hear some of the stuff they be talking about. I got who you get that nonsense from. But that's stupid. That is actually stupid. Well, how do we know God created the world? Well, how do you know he didn't? What kind of proof you got? I got the Bible. Now I don't know what you're using, but it says in the beginning God created. Now you look up the word created and you tell me what that means. When I get through it, they be twisted. They be, they be ringing their hand leaving me because I'm going I'm to ring them out. Because they ain't got no proof that he don't exist. I got proof, infallible proof, that he exists. They go, well, well, somebody else wrote the Bible. Okay, somebody wrote the Bible. You sure write. But God gave them inspiration to write it. They couldn't write it on their own. So what was written was written because God said, write this. So now what you going to do with that? Boy, they be messed up and so mad with me when they leave. They be stinging. <laughs> because, see, you got, nowadays, you, you can't talk to people and, and not know what you're talking about. Because let me tell you something. Devil studied the Bible just as hard as you do. Just to prove to you when you get in a situation so he can quote some, some scripture to you that, that don't mean nothing. 
strong in faith. Now he, he called to Jesus, throw yourself down, but he missed something. He missed the part where he said, don't tempt God. So why would Jesus jump down and tempt God and hope an angels catch him? Now how stupid can you get? That's just like the scripture said, don't, you can eat in the deadly poison, you won't die. Go out there and drink you some if you want to. Yeah? We got a black bag for you. Because see, you, you're tempting God. You know, <laughs> you're tempting God. So we, we're not to tempt God. So then, if, if that be so, then, then there is a, 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 a scripture here that I want you to look at. Because there are seven things God has done. Number one is, been our dwelling place in all generations. Now what I mean by that, you hear because of past generations. Jesus himself came down through 42 generations. But now you hear because of your, your inheritance and your generation. Now what, what takes place now is that you in a far better position than any of your ancestors were right now. Because you, you came down, you don't been through that. You personally didn't go through it. They went through it for you. Jesus went through it for us. And because he went through it for us, that's why we can stand and say, without a shadow of a doubt, he lived. And, it, and power and authority rest upon him. So we, we can say that. So not only that, but but but, but watch this. He, uh, he formed the earth and the world. The Bible says the earth is, is the Lord in the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He have founded upon the sea and established upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? He went on to give the, the description of the ones that can, that can stand in God's presence. Those that have clean hands. Have not lifted their heart to vanity. Vanity is emptiness, nothing. Solomon said everything that I wanted, I got it. But the sad thing about it. It was all vanity. He said, because without God, I had nothing. Mm. But he had everything. But without God, he had nothing. He said, I didn't withhold my eyes from nothing I wanted. That boy had it written in the, in the, in the back of his chariot, all the girls I loved before. <laughs> so, but, but still, it didn't do him any good. No good at all. So we, we have to understand that the secret place that God wants us to wrap up in is church. The church is going to stand. Do you know, and may I quote this to you, what God said, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church? Do you know your safety is in the church? Your safety is in the church where the word of God is active and powerful in it to it. And that's why when the word is going forth, some people are shouting. Thank <laughs> you.